Hey guys, this is Dardabos with Dardabos Dominions. I'm here with Gazlov. How's it going? And I'm here with Nosy. Hello, hello. Now, last week we had Gazlov with us, but we were missing out on Nosy. And um, I'm really happy that you're here, Nosy, because we started to do a um, an EA Pan uh, national overview. And I, I we did one of those together, right? Yeah, we did the, the pre-game. Uh, interview with the going over the build and uh nosy i mean you're you're one of the people i i call you a generalist you're you know a little bit about everything you normally got my questions down pat but what's interesting is would you say that you're in the same place now than you were when we had that first uh when we had that first overview mm. I wouldn't be taking the same build if that's what you're, you're getting at with the question. Uh, in terms of the same place, I don't feel that I'm significantly closer to to having a a good grasp of uh, EA Pan. It's one of those things you need to need to play a nation a, a lot of times to to really get a, a good handle on a, on them properly. You might think you know something, and then uh, you play a game with them, and and you get found out. So. I just I really like how as a Dominion's player, you're always evolving. You're always changing and every game kind of adds another block to the tower per se oh absolutely now uh just before that you were talking to me about some of pan's um path accesses um and, and we went over the na we went over all of their units we went over all of their researchers and now we're going to be looking at a um pretender now do you think that there are any paths that we would need um guaranteed no matter whether you're playing a blitz whether you're playing anything are there any essential paths that you need well with magic diversity now the, off the top of my head I, I can't think of uh a specific one they absolutely need to have uh possibly possibly astral uh and possibly with the earth astral cross path but um the main thing is that uh, that Pan is just so locked into two paths, basically, with a little bit of tiny access elsewhere that uh, you you lack a lot of possible tools that uh, you may find useful. In in particular, the ability to forge certain items or or cast certain spells for specific counters to things that you come across, and you never know what you're going to uh, come across in any given game. You might have some idea that there's going to be poison if there's a, a statist, but uh, the main thing is um, that they don't have flexibility with their magic without it coming from the god. Now, when you say they're uh, limited to two paths, which paths are you talking about? Uh, nature and earth. They're high nature. Uh, uh, they do have a, a little bit of blood as well, um, which is a little tricky to get going with Pan because their blood searcher is a, a massive slow to recruit mage that's going to eat all your income in uh, upkeep. It was and really not, interesting when I played uh, this. Either. When I played the station, dude, I didn't. I like the only thing I used my blood for was for the priests for blood sacrifices and pushing my. Did you end up doing that at all? Uh, yeah, I did that on the border with Theridos, but it it wasn't uh, terribly effective. I didn't have a strong enough uh, blood economy to to really make it happen, and um, yeah, it uh, it didn't quite get off the ground. So let's uh, let's head first into our first uh, type of pretender, which is the blitz pretender. Gazlov, how how much have you blitzed? I've blitzed a little bit, uh, probably maybe three or four games that I've blitzed. What is it? So, that you, what do you normally look for in a blitz pretender when you did your four? Well, you know, I kind of played it the same, except uh, without the blood economy going. Uh, as a pretender, did you take like an awake? Because uh, I know that a lot of a lot of blitzes, they take awake pretenders in order to get that opening start. Would you still support that even in a blitz? It's a good idea because in a blitz, you typically have four, five, at best six players, um, and an awake. Or even, I mean, you can probably get away with uh, with a dormant pretender, but it, it war is going to happen very fast, and so having having that just extra super combatant it really can can make all the difference. 
And in a blitz, one war, one war often, or one little battle oftentimes is all you're going to have with somebody before they're beaten. Nosy, would you, uh, if you had a choice between either going with a uh, hell bless, like a cheap rainbow hell bless, or getting a monster with like a, a, a heavier bless with an awake, which one would you go with with Pan? With Pan, I'd be inclined to, to take the heavier bless, uh, not necessarily an, an awake, but um, I I don't have a lot of blitz experience to draw from. I gather that uh, there is a need to, to come hard and fast out of the gates. Uh, I probably wouldn't go on a wake monster unless there was something uh, very, very niche about it that allowed for a good bless. Perhaps something like with the Cyclops, actually. Um, with the, the paths that he's got, uh, not so much for the, the Hellbless side of things, but it's a pretty good um, pseudo Titan, which I might consider that for a, a dormant uh, god. Paths that they need, good super combatant paths forging ability etc i was able to use this guy because i was the disciple during our game and it was very very nice to have one of these guys on top of pan um let's talk about when you're talking pseudo um with a with a pseudo titan what are the early uh spells that this guy has access to oh well, mist form iron skin temper flesh um those would be the key ones up the alteration line that pan likes so much um, Gazlop, if we were looking at a, um, at a hell bless, what are we looking at? Um, what are, what are some key, what are some key blesses that we could go with our white centaurs? Actually, can I make a comment about that? Uh, oh, yeah. Tender? Yeah, please do. So is there any point on having both, uh, mist form and iron skin? Yeah, uh, if, um, the mist form's less likely to pop from a hard hit if your protection's higher. Hmm. Oh, that's and, a good question. Does okay. So, uh, with with temper flesh, do, when it when it reduces it in a quarter, when it's a twenty point hit, it's twenty point at the very end, right? But well, temper flesh is different again. But so okay. Firstly, the, the iron skin is to get the protection up really high. Um, which if it's high enough, you you'll take less chip damage. And hard hits won't pop mist form. So the the question was about iron skin and, and mist form. Uh, okay. Temper flesh pairs very nicely with mist form because it halves the damage after protection. Um, so the mist form is less likely to be popped. I believe that's the way that works with that. It's certainly the way it works with a, a buff like moss body, which incidentally Pan can also cast. Um, so if you have uh, some mist uh, moss body uh, gets popped if you take more than fifteen damage on on any hit. Um, and adding a, a liquid body or temper flesh, either the physical resistances, um, means that effectively you have to, to get through like with like 31 damage to be able to pop the, the mist form. Yeah, I just, That's I don't know if I would take, I don't know if I'd want air on my, um, on my pretender necessarily, because if you're using super combatants, Mist form is not a very, it's not very good protection against another player because it's so easy to just find magic weapons on something. What I use it for mist is mist form isn't the sole protection though. You've I, got other I, other forms of protection as well. There, there's two and, types of magic phase: cloud trapeze and teleport. And teleport uses astral, and astral is much worse to have like astral too. And that's why I like the I like the air too. It's actually for that. And then, oh, yeah, by the way, if I jump onto some troops, why not? It's part of my script. And depending on what point. you're fighting. Yeah, the, the Cloud Trapeze is also very useful, but it's going to come on later for Pan, who's going to gonna rush Alteration to start with. That's fair. Um, and additionally, if you're expecting to fight uh, a Thug or a Super Combatant yourself, instead of Mist Form, you'd replace it with um, Mirror Image. Mm, Again, it's part, good, of, yeah. part of the longer buff script. Um, it's also got, uh, I guess it probably wouldn't matter because during this era, there's no crossbows, but you could get um, air shield up. You could also get, um, if you don't have it in your bless, notably, if you're going hell bless, you can go with lightning. air shield um, uh, is actually good for, for pan um, if there's going to be a lot of arrow fire, you know, fighting against a machaka or something like that. And especially where that particular uh, nation is going to be bringing flaming arrows. 
Where is the... There's an earth-air cross path that does a shield. Do you know... Oh, flying shield. That's the other thing is he can do... Uh, he can put flying shield on him, which would also help out a little bit. Now, Nozi, how does... Can you, can you go over flying shield for me? Because I've never really understood this. Uh, I could potentially get some of the details wrong, but it basically just adds, so it's a 50% chance to add 20 to your protection, and it can stack over the normal cap of 40. So I, this has the potential to get you all the way to 60? It, potentially, but um, it does respect uh, armor piercing and armor, armor negating, though. So um, if you've got an armor negating weapon hitting it, irrelevant. It doesn't matter if you get your 50% roll. Um, it's as good as having nothing. Okay, so um, having this guy, uh, Gazloff, what would you take as a, what are some really good hell blesses just in general, and then how about, and then we can go into specific for Pan? Well, Bark Skin is a pretty good pickup uh, in general. Uh, if your unit is uh, has zero natural protection and wears a lot of armor, um, these guys are berserkers, and so that's pretty useful to try to get your damage down, you know, a little bit because uh, it'll it'll pop their berserk without one shot in them, and they can go to town. Um, for these guys, they have I think twenty three hit points, so you probably don't want regeneration. Um, but regeneration is also a very good. Uh, incarnate bless for a lot of nations. Blood vengeance can be pretty awesome if you have a lot of cheap sacreds. You you eventually do win the attrition war with those. These would uh, not be. Would these these would no, not be right? Not no, no. But yeah, so specific to Pan, you you don't want blood vengeance. You could you could work a a, a regen blood bond actually with with the centaurs. It's expensive. I think that's what I, I did that with the... Uh, I did that where I did a, a dormant. So it came out turn 12 in theory. It ended up coming out turn 15 and somebody called me on my, you know, 15, turn 15 bless. I lost because of that. But during, uh, during like testing, the, uh, the blood bond regen white centaurs were disgusting because it, it would pop their... Uh, it popped their uh Berserker. Thank you. <laughs> Words. But yeah, it worked out really, really well. But I think that at the same time I would never do it again because like you said, Gazlov, it's 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 nice, but I think we had talked about this, Nosy, where you you and I used to have discussions over, you know, what was better, and we would be arguing the merits of, of our side, but there's some things in in Dominions where both things can be good, but something can be better. And I think that's what you got to do a lot of times is pick that better option. And I don't, I didn't find Blood Bond Regen to be better. Um, where do we normally see Blood Bond Regen on Nosy? Uh, Anakites, basically. <laughs> that's the the bread and butter one. Uh. Big chunky units that uh, are very hard to uh, kill, basically. Gaslov, why is that? Get them in a big mass. Yeah, it just makes them really hard, hard to kill because they, every time you, you know, it, basically like for Anakites, um, especially the Sheshites, they're going to regenerate uh, six HP a turn, and if you divide their damage over a lot of different units, you now have a much higher total regeneration. You know, so these large units will get stuck behind the front line and they aren't really doing anything. But what they can do with Blood Bond is they'll soak up some of their damage and then heal up. And so it's a really good combination. You'll also sometimes see that um, that bless on the on Russ's bears. Their uh, skin shift. Oh, yeah. I think that's what they're called. So let's move into the uh, the death uh hell bless for lack of better terms is there anything here that would be decent i mean fear five or death weapons 
Uh, the really only see... thing. Sorry, uh, you go. Go ahead, guys. Well, for, for for Pangea, I really feel like you want high defense and high attack. So are you talking like Stygian's Flesh, maybe? Well, not, not, see, I wouldn't go with these paths here. Okay, so you'd avoid this one completely. Nosy, what is Death Weapons? I've never seen anybody take this before. Uh, not, nor, the, nor have I. Um, the only time I've ever seen Death Weapons was in Dom 4, and that was because it was a, a, an add on for the, um, well, no, it was what you got at, at Death 9. Uh, in Dominions 4. But um, I've never seen anyone take it. It's uh, it's like a normal weapon bless adding a special effect. It's an armor negating damage to your weapons and it has an MR roll to negate it. It's really interesting because it can Very actually expensive. disease your target too, which seems like it'd be really good against... I mean, I, I imagine if one of these things got through a super combatant, that super combatant is, I mean, going to be hurting at least a little. Yeah, I I could see it being used uh, and killing a super combatant potentially. Uh, they would probably, for dealing with that problem, stack MR among their other defenses, and That's maybe true. that wouldn't be so significant. Um, but it is horribly expensive for what you get. I I haven't seen a, a use case that I've that would be convincing to me for it. If, yes, if you're going to take a weapon, bless take thunder weapons. <laughs> Yes, have you ever seen uh have you ever seen death weapons before? No. I've only heard people talk about it in theory and with the idea is like, hey, I want to take all the weapon blesses. You know, I, I don't think it ever works out very well. What's really interesting about the death path, and I think it's really everybody wants death five because that's where you get into the boosters, that's where you can get into the big spell, that's where you can get Death 5 seen, or is it Death 5 or Death 4, Nosy? No, if you're talking about boosters, you need to be able to boost up to Death 5. Uh, so, death 4, a, a D4 mage can, can boost up to D5 and do the things from there. So, like, I, I get D4 on a lot of my, um, and I get D4 on a lot of my pretenders, but I, I just, I don't really find a good bless, because I, especially D4 normally means that you're going to go, um, like, you're either going to go dormant or in prison. I mean, is there anything here in the death paths that is actually worth going? For, for specifically for a hellblast for blitzers, uh, the only thing that I would I would consider for most nations, uh, and Pan isn't the exception on this one, uh, would be Stygian flesh. Uh, and the thing that's notable with that, if you're comparing it to to bark skin, is that um, the invulnerability doesn't benefit from the pro, uh, bonuses from berserk. So you're only getting like a normal bark skin effect as opposed to the usual berserker adding three to the uh, natural protection. Okay. Uh, plus there's the, the issue about magic weapons going straight through it. So I, I wouldn't consider death for Hellbleth bless specifically. If I wanted the paths uh, and it wasn't a, a Hellbless, I would likely for them pick something like... Uh, See, they probably don't even need Withering Weapons. Withering Weapons has some use in that um, if someone's sending thugs into you that are hard to kill, uh, one bad MR check on them, and then they, they're decayed. Um, but it's what, really just something to spend the, the paths on. What I like about Stiggy and Flesh is that if you are going in a Blitz and you are expecting a lot of um, like cheese, heavy-hitting, uh, or like heavy blesses, a lot of times that if you're doing that, you don't have room for your astral because astral is you either go big or go home. And um, like if you're going to take like a monster or something like that. So you're going to probably see fewer magic weapons in a blitz would be my guess. That being said, my blitz, my blitz number is like two or three, I think so. Okay, moving on to astral. Uh, Nozy, let's uh, you can go first on this one. Uh, what what would you go with uh, here for a? Uh, is there any mega blessedness to be had within the astral uh, pool for Pan? Yes. Uh, see, I'd be I'd be inclined for Pan to just pick up mag magic weapons, and I'd I'd be happy to include that as part of a hell bless. Um, 
and that would be likely in games involving you know Soromaria, Marverni, Therados, you know, things like that, or Ubar. Possibly uh, someone else that might be using uh, air thugs. So, how about a, a um, Gethop, Do you have anything on here that you can see that's of note that's a good helpless uh, for Pan? Well, luck is pretty neat. Um, but you usually want to combine luck with something like regeneration or high defense. Um, yeah, for for Pan, ah, I, I'm gonna have to agree with Nosy. I mean, mag magic weapons is probably the the best thing you're gonna put on them. What's interesting is like etherealness looks really good because it it kind of it would you know without the magic weapons on the the board it would be very difficult for for somebody to hit the uh, but it would negatively how, nosy how does that work with uh, with with uh, thurking it actually has to hit right if it if it's negated it deals zero damage and thus is not a zerking hit right. Well, I mean, the the centaurs taking no damage is always a plus, even if they're not triggering berserk. Okay. Um, but but the berserk has a chance to trigger on damage. So etherealness would I mean would that work at all? I mean, if you've got the points spare to be able to afford it and use it, uh, cool. I mean, it will uh, increase the survivability of your centaurs pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. It won't help them be very killy, um, and they they do have some trouble with attrition as it is. Um, that will address some of that, but I'm not sure it'll be sufficient either. Yeah, I would say for, for Pangea, uh, if, if you're going to go down, you know that high of paths plus magic, I would go with. Um, uh, the quickness bless in water yeah. over that. Yes, definitely. Let's let's skip over Earth and go uh, and go back later. What are you talking about with quickness bless? So this one's really good for a lot of nations in that, uh, other than the fact that it's super expensive. So you you know this is definitely a hell bless wrapped up into one path. But your your guys basically move much faster. They attack twice in a round they get plus two attack and plus two defense twice for each melee weapon and they have two melee weapons yeah so they'll so those guys will have uh four attacks a turn i'd be i i, I wonder if you could get away with a double attack quickness larger bless where it, what I, I would consider, what I would consider with quickness, uh, if it's if you're really going ham on it with the the hell bless, um, would be quickness and um, fate weaving. There's a little bit of anti synergy there though, but um, the fate weaving effect can. Uh, well, actually, I'd probably rather magic weapons still. But um, the interesting thing with fate weaving is that it, uh, I think. It adds or a negative uh, dice roll to enemy DRN. So normally the the DRN comprises of, of two exploding uh, dice, and fate weaving once the effect is uh, propped on a on an enemy, it uh, adds a negative one to that DRN. So you you said it it it's a minus one to all their dice or it's. So the, the normal DRN involves rolling two dice. Okay. And what the fate weaving does when it adds the cursed luck. So there, there's a, an MR check when they attack a, a unit with fate weaving. Uh, it's a difficult to resist MR check. And when they fail it, they get cursed luck. And what the cursed luck means is that on DRN rolls related to protection and attack and defense rolls, et cetera, et cetera, there's the normal two dice rolls that are made. And then there's another dice roll that is made that subtracts from oh, the really? DRN. Yeah, but it's it's a 50-50 whether or not the cursed luck takes effect as well. Okay. So, anyway, but it, there's a little bit of anti-synergy in that um, they've got to make attacks against the centaurs, but centaurs have decent defenses, and uh, like as, if it's a question of uh, defense rolls, their defense is reasonably high until they get harassed down and they can repel things as well. 
which quickness does aid a little bit with, but um, that'll be something I, I'd look at and then reject in favor of something else. It's kind of interesting. Does it anyone strike in the unit? Does that mean they actually have to hit in order for it to take effect? No, they just have to process the attack roll, I believe. Okay. Um, now with the uh, with quickness, I, I I think that what was the stuff? What was the bless that uh, that uh, Griffo went with? He went with quickness, double, and then double what? swiftness, wasn't it? Was it double swiftness? Something uh, insane. I don't know. The meme gets bigger every time. Maybe he went triple. <laughs> I see him with triple. Yeah. <laughs> um, outside the outside the mem, what would uh, w is this actually viable at all? Stacking swiftness with quickness, or is it just for for the lulls? Not really. With quickness, it's pr practically that's going to be the only thing you can put on your on your guy. Okay. It's you know ten water and magic, positive maybe, magic. Maybe magic weapons if you've got an oracle to to use in your uh, pretender chassis. Okay, yeah, that's the thing is, Web. I went quickness once, and I think you were in that game, Nosy. And I just, I don't like it because when we were going through trying to get quickness, um, and just just to show what it takes to get quickness, you need ten water, which is a dead end path. I mean, I, Nosy, why would you ever want to? Can, can you think of any reason why you would need water in a pretender chassis? Uh, path access. As Hinnom, I always end up empowering into water. <laughs> but you, you empower um, into it because you get one, and that kind of takes care of the rest, right? Uh, no, I've often done a double empower into water, because um, if I want to get up higher death without having it on my god, I end up having to go with Kukithiads. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but um, the, uh, the Conjuration 6 requires water 4, death 1 to summon Okay. Uh, a water three, death three mage. So there is some use, but is there any use? I mean, what would be the highest that you ever went into water naturally without having to try for a bless? Uh, when you say the highest went into to water, oh, so as part of the bless, not specifically going for quickness or for 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 trying to make up for path access. Would oh, you? High need... water is great. <laughs> Okay, why is that? Well, uh, it it does depend a little bit on what you're actually going to need it for, but um, there's uh, a, a bunch of nice spells. So if, if you have a lot of high water mages, um, Falling Frost actually does do a bit of work at Evocation 5. Um, now, there's other nice spells like Frozen Heart. You can summon water elementals. You can, um, if you're doing fatigue plays, you've got uh, Grip of Winter. Uh, if you're fighting undead, there's cleansing water, which, okay, depending on, on what sort of undead you're fighting, that might not be ideal. If it's Scalaria, it's not enough. Yeah, I think um, that I miss, uh, I'm miss speaking. Like, okay, so let's say you've got Astral 5. Astral 5 is really nice because there's some, like, you know, you come in here, you go down to Astral, and there's, like, Master and Slave. There's, you know, there's these crazy spells that can be had with oh, high Astral. Waters. What, what, what are the high water? Is there, are there any? Vengeful Waters, yeah, Maelstrom. Vengeful. Okay, so those will be the globals. But in order to get Vengeful Waters, oh, where is that at? Thaumaturgy. Okay, so there's the ring. There's the... Okay, so you would still need Water 5, correct? Uh, again, depends on what you, you what boosters you've got for, for just purely using water. Yeah. Yeah, you can only really do Robe of the Sea and the, the ring. Um, okay. So you'd need Water. But if you've got a, a water three mage, you can make those boosters, summon a, a queen of water, um, assuming they're not already taken, which they probably are. And um, yeah, summon into it that way. This is if, just uh, water sinks as well in that you can you can summon the um, the trolls, the the sea kings, uh, and oh. there's other other useful mages as well that you can summon through water. Okay. So this so, that's a good thing. A little water is always good to have on yours. Um, also now, a special mention to Bishop Fish. What's that, sorry? Also, also a special mention to Bishop Fish. Your holy three generic. Yes. 
what's interesting about this and we're talking about mega blesses is, is that taking this right now on a on one of the cheapest pretenders out there going all the way to 10 keeping it awake so that you can use it art incarnate and you're already sitting at minus 75 design points so my glorious idea of you know adding larger and yeah. attack with this is not going to happen what chassis do you have available for to bring up because one that starts with more water will probably end up a bit cheaper he starts with water one i don't go, go know with father of the sea father of the sea um okay i wh which one is that i'm sorry oh you know what pangea might not be able to do that yeah okay. <laughs> the uh the statue is a blood fountain is it yeah uh yeah I think that's what we we went with some sort of fountain, and that's how we got it so high. I don't think. What we're is the dragon? Have... What is what is the the blue dragon start with? It's two. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's see. But then you've got the the chassis itself, which is hideous. Vola, Vola of the Bountiful Forest. That's what you're going to want to use. Vola of the Bountiful. What? Is that the one on the far left? Oh, good college. Uh, no, see was... Okay, so we have it's still it's still minus ninety three, but you've got a, a couple of points of dominion more as well, so it probably works out cheaper. I I agree. <sighs> so either either way, quickness is an incredibly expensive, and you're probably not going to get anything beyond quickness. Oh, and what's great about her is later you can get celestial rainbow, <laughs> which is have a you ever real seen that in Blitz? Huh? <laughs> Have you ever seen that in a blitz? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Sorry, guys. Um, so the uh, okay, so we we went through the. I, I know that in order to get this done, that uh, Grippa went with a with a dormant, and that's kind of how he was able to do that. I'm not sure if. Oh my goodness, I still need to add more points. Oh no, I need to delete it from here. Okay. Um. What is okay? So let's move back to Earth and talk about some um, some mega bless that we could see. And I think Earth is kind of unique in that um, it's actually got a bunch of different options. I think for Pan, what would you, what do you see here of No Gazlop? Man, I would honestly, I would just take Strength of the Earth a couple times. See, that's the thing is that I didn't even think about that one where you're where you're buffing up your strength what is the maximum strength that you think you could pull on this nosy uh maximum strength you could pull on it like if you're going with a with a instead of going with a huge uh like hell bless right off the bat where it's you know all these incarnates you could get little strength right like a strength here strength there we've got strength of the earth and then what are the other ones is it strength of the flesh strength yeah. of the flesh What's the highest that you've ever seen somebody stack these uh, stack these low strength boosters? Oh, plus ten. That's you can get the all the way to I've seen. You get a plus ten. Oh yeah, yeah that was a Zavalba, uh build. They might have even had blood surge on top, but I I think I ran a, a plus nine or plus eight plus eight with surge on a Micklin one time as well. Okay, was that your uh, tournament game last year? It was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, what about larger on Pan? What do you think, Nosy? Uh, I think it is absolutely viable to use. Um, it, perhaps not going in quite as hard with the bless as what I did is maybe more correct. Um, you went with you went with larger, correct? Yeah, I I had larger, and uh, the the neat thing about it is the uh, the increase. Well, there's a, a a bunch of utility things uh the increased map movement the increased siege strength um increasing the weapon length so that you can repel many more different things um they benefit from the the strength uh in combat as well and you don't need to bless them for them to get that effect uh though obviously you want them to have the the bless um and notably with their hooves because they aren't actually mounted they benefit from the the strength as well unlike uh most cavalry units that's really cool. So, yeah, so they get the full benefit of any strength um, uh, blesses. Gazlov, would you, or do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, larger is, I think, a really good choice for them, um, especially since their free spawn is size 2. So it kind of 
synergizes a little bit because you're you can have your centaurs up front followed behind by your uh i can't remember what the, the oh so the maenads can actually like sift through the white centaurs yeah that'd be really that's yeah if they're cool. size four they can that's uh that's really ingenious okay and then what's interesting i like to me i think that there's a lot of um a lot of to be said for this size four size two um, especially with like a high defense unit, because that size two guy acts as a, um, it's almost like a defensive buffer, especially if they're cheap, because two size four can't fit together. That size two can keep on, you can keep on getting another size two and size two. It's one thing with Fomoria, which has the, um, the unmarked, I think it's called, which is why I like the unmarked more than I like the Giants even though the, the, the hit points is different, because you can do this, you know, same thing you're doing with the uh, white centaurs, which is, you know, sifting those size two dudes right through. So kind of cool. Um, what would you say towards uh, fortitude for, for Pan? What do you think about that? Yes, I'll go for it, dude. Um, so that's the one that, that has damage, right? After yeah. protection. I don't um, know if I like that on 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 Pan because their natural protection is kind of low, and there there are just better options I think to uh, to keep them alive than than that really expensive bless. What do you what do you think, Dozy? Do you agree with that? I'm I'm inclined to agree. Now it will make them a, a fair bit not like noticeably tougher to kill. Uh, but you pay a lot for it, and um, the bang for buck you get out of a couple of strength uh, buffs is, uh, I think, far better. But Excellent. Look, if you're going to go with the super heavy fortitude regen blood bond, they can probably do it, kind of. But yeah, they, they're not <laughs> ideal for it. Not the ideal chassis. Yeah, I don't think they have enough hit points to really benefit a lot from that. Yeah, I, I don't think... Three, three you... per turn on the regen and and yeah if, if you I've can seen, blood bond to mitigate sort of thing but um i wasn't terribly convinced but it it, it it makes them tough but uh i did see uh a marverni with his uh buffed berserkers uh punch through them all the same <laughs> i think it's what we were talking about before it, it's definitely good but is there better oh absolutely now with the uh with the fire blesses um is all going to be of any use on them whatsoever i'm a fan of all i think all is kind of underrated by some now why uh, why is that well all is great because it's going to keep them from getting harassed down it it prevents it prevents the attack from taking place uh about half the time for most units and yeah, I mean, it just, it's just a really good defensive bless. Now to go along this line, do you take it? Cause you're the elf player and Pan kind of acts elfish. Um, do, would, do you ever take this on your elves? It, it would go well on Vans, I think. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put them on Van Heers. Van Heers, you, you really want. You really want to play to their strengths, and that's to make them very, very killy. So this is this is definitely more on the defensive end of things. Yeah, I, I think all would be better on Pan than it would be on any of the Himes. Mm -hmm. um, now, is it a good choice? I mean, possibly not. Yeah, I'm not convinced on most of the defensive blesses for Pan. I, I think they're better off going for Killy there as well. Now, to to segue into that idea, Nozzy, uh, we've got the weapons blesses, which we kind of uh, did not hit very hard. Are there any of these weapon blesses that you would take, the flaming weapons, thunder weapons, so on and so forth? Uh, well, the best weapon bless is strength buffs, really. But... Um, <laughs> That aside, going for a hell bless, I would be more keen to take thunder weapons than I would with flaming weapons. Excellent. 
Okay, guys. Well, I think that we have uh, gone over. We 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 went more instead of actually making a specific chassis. We went into a um. We went to hold on just a second. Instead of having a specific chassis, we kind of gave a general overview of of what you should do to make your own chassis. So I think we're gonna leave here. I'm kind of interested down in the comments if people have any ideas for specific chassis. But we unfortunately are out of time. So Gazlov, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Nozi, thank you so much for your expertise in this area. Not a problem. Thank you. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye.